Hello all, my name is Ajit Kumar, Assistant Professor Mechanical Department from Rohini College of Engineering and Technology. Today I am going to discuss about the subject principles of management. The subject code is MG8591. Today I am going to discuss about two topics from Unit 1. One is 14 principles of management by Henry Feuer and another one is trends and challenges of management in global scenario. So first we can see about modern operational management theory that is the 14 principles of Henry Foyle. Henry Foyle also known as the father of modern management theory gave a new perception of the concept of management. He introduced a general theory that can be applied to all levels of management and every department. The Foyle theory is practiced by the managers to organize and regulate the internal activities of an organization. He concentrated on accomplishing managerial efficiency. The 14 principles of management created by Henry Feuer are explained as division of work or specialization, authority and responsibility, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction, subordination of individual to general, remuneration, centralization, line of command, order, equity, stability of tenure, initiative, Esprit decops. So the first one is division of work or specialization. Division of work makes a man specialist. The reason is that the division of work helps to specialize in an activity which increases the output with perfection. It also avoids wastage of time. Division can be applied to both technical and managerial kind of work. Henry believed that Segregating work in the workforce among the workers will enhance the quality of the product. Similarly, he also concluded that the division of work improves the productivity, efficiency, accuracy and speed of the workers. This principle is appropriate for both the managerial as well as technical work level. And the next one is authority and responsibility. These are the two key aspects of management. Authority facilitates the management to work efficiently and responsibility makes them responsible for the work done under their guidance or leadership. Managers must be able to give orders. Authority gives them this right. Note that responsibility arises wherever authority is exercised. And the next one is discipline. Employees must obey and respect the rules that govern the organization. Without discipline, nothing can be accomplished. It is the core value for any project or any management. Good performance and sensible interrelation make the management job easy and comprehensive. Employees' good behavior also helps them smoothly build and progress in their professional careers. And the next one is unity of command. Every employee should receive orders from only one superior. This means an employee should have only one boss and follow his command. If an employee has to follow more than one boss, that begins a conflict of interest and can create confusion. And the next one is unity of direction. Whoever is engaged in the same activity should have a unified goal. This means all the person working in a company should have one goal and motive which will make the work easier and achieve the set goal easily. Each group of organizational activities that have the same objective should be directed by one manager using one plan. And the next one is subordination of individual. The individual should subordinate self-interest to the general good. It is incumbent upon management to reduce conflict between the individual and the general well-being wherever possible. This indicates a company should work unitedly towards the interest of a company rather than personal interest. Be subordinate to the purposes of an organization. This refers to the old chain of command in a company. And the next one is remuneration. This plays an important role in motivating the workers of a company. Remuneration can be monetary or non-monetary. However, it should be according to an individual's effort they have made. Means the wages and salaries paid to employee it should be fair and must be paid on time. 
it satisfy both employee and employer it should be decided on work allotted and cost of living is also come under the remuneration and the next one is centralization in any company the management or any authority responsible for the decision making process should be neutral however this depends on the size of an organization henry foyle stressed on the point that there should be a balance between the hierarchy and division for power foyle thought centralization of authority to be desirable at least for overall control certainly both formulation of policy and the generation of basic rules and procedures ought to be centralized and the next one is scalar chain foil on this principle highlights that the hierarchy step should be from the top to the lowest this is necessary so that every employee knows their immediate senior also they should be able to contact any if needed the line of authority from top management to the lowest rank represent the scalar chain communication should follow this chain and the next one is order people and material should be in the right place at the right time a company should maintain a well defined work order to have a favorable work culture the positive atmosphere in the workplace will boost more positive productivity and the next one is equity managers should be kind and fair to their subordinates all employees should be treated equally and respectfully it's a responsibility of a manager that no employees face discrimination and the next one is stability of tenure of personal an employee delivers the best if they feel secure in their job it's a duty of the management to offer job security to their employees high employee turnover is inefficient management should provide orderly personal planning and ensure that replacements are available to fill vacancies and the next one is initiative the management should support and encourage the employees to take initiatives in an organization it will help them to increase their interest and make them worth the power of thinking out proposing and executing management should encourage employees to originate and carry out plans and the last one is esprit de corps it means that create a team spirit or union strength develop an atmosphere of mutual trust and understanding create a sense of belonging employees it bring a loyalty dedication commitment to the group it is responsibility of the management to motivate their employees and be supportive of each other regularly developing trust and mutual understanding will lead to a positive outcome and work environment this 14 principles of management are used to manage an organization and are beneficial for prediction planning decision making organization and process management control and coordination so the next topic we want to see in this unit 1 is trends and challenges of management in global scenario that is workforce diversity changing employee expectation international environment building organizational capabilities job design and organizational structure changing psychosocial system technological advance management of human relations changes in legal environment expanding the globalization so first we want to see about workforce diversity that means changing the way you do business it refers to the way in which people in a workplace are similar and different from one another in addition to the characteristic protected by law other similarities and differences commonly cited include background education language skills personality and work role and the second one is changing employee expectation the managers has then to redraw new methods of motivation such as job design example motivation of workers to deliver their contribution towards the accomplishment of organizational goals third one is international environment the environment which includes all the factors and forces which are external to the business organization such as economic socio cultural legal demographic etc are known as international environment and the fourth one is building organizational capabilities to acquire new skills knowledge and to evaluate environmental changes to evaluate business strategies and the fifth one is job design and organizational structure design with foreign concept example quality circle total quality management so uh, there is two approaches in job design and organizational structure that is task approach and people approach 
and sixth one is changing psychosocial system management designed to perform its work function but in future human participation will be required there and seventh one is technological advance new jobs will be created and many old jobs will become redundant so this means as technological advance and the eighth one is management of human relations new generation of workforce comprising educated will ask for higher degree of participation and the ninth one is changing in legal environment it increases changing in legal environment necessary adjustments have to be made and the last one is expanding globalization a key element in expanding globalization is reducing trade barriers so that goods and services can move around the world easily so we have discussed about the 14 principles of management and the trends and challenges of management in global scenario in this video thank you